Okay, the second component of our aggregate expenditure is going to be investment. Okay, now, uh, there, there's been quite a bit of confusion on what are the types of investment that we are actually talking about in uh, macroeconomics at the introductory level. Okay, so today I'm going to introduce to you the three types of investments okay, that uh, is accounted for in the capital letter I for the AE equation. Okay, so... I'm going to introduce to you what is the investment function first. This is the investment investment function, okay, whereby we have got I, which stands for investment, equals to autonomous investment minus the sensitivity to interest rates multiplied by R. So what is small letter R? Small letter R is the real interest rates. Okay, we will be going through what are real interest rates after this. Okay, so this is just an introduction. Okay, I'm going to break it down now into the types of investment. Okay, so now there are three types of investment. Okay, the first type would be residential investment. Okay, where households buy uh, properties or houses. Okay, for spec speculative purposes. You know, they expect the value to increase, you know, and therefore they buy, uh, they buy houses. Okay. And we also look at non-residential investment, which is investments by firms. They have to buy machines to increase productivity. And we also have got inventory. Okay, invent inventorial uh, investment is basically uh, whatever that is not sold at this current period that is kept to be sold at the next period. Okay, the reason why this is investment is because in a typical economy where inflation occurs, okay, they can actually sell this at a higher price in the future. So therefore, it is considered uh, as a form of investment. Okay, now, um, moving on to to emphasize on the investment function, we need to take a look what actually affects investment decisions. Okay, so as we know, okay, I not over here refers to autonomous investment, which is investment that is not re affected by uh, interest rates or income for any for any for any other matter. Okay, so what what is autonomous investment in relation to real life examples? Uh, no matter what the economy is doing, no matter what interest rates are, uh, firms and businesses will still need a certain amount of capital, machines, okay, to actually start operations. So this is that minimum amount of investment that they need to make. So what is I1? I1 is the sensitivity to interest rates. How sensitive are firms are to interest? Okay, uh, R stands for the real interest rates. Okay, you realize that this is a negative, this negative sign over here. Okay, what, what does it mean to have a negative sign? That means uh, my investment decisions, okay, the amount of investment I'm going to make is going to be indirectly uh, related to interest rates. Okay, uh, we will see why this is so later. Okay, so you just got to remember this function over here first. Okay, and now we will take a look at real interest rates. So what are real interest rates? Real interest rates are, okay, your real interest rates equals to approximately your nominal interest rates plus inflation rate. Okay, so this is nominal interest rate and this is inflation rate. Now, what is this nominal int inf uh, interest rate? It is the rates where your banks pay you for putting your money inside the bank. Okay, and it is not referring to the returns that your bonds gives you. Okay, in the introductory economics level, okay, we are just looking at bonds, you know, appreciating in value, and we should sell at a at a later later period of time. Okay, so we are not talking about uh, the amount of interest that they pay us. Okay, this nominal interest rate over here refers to the interest rate that banks are giving you to put your money into their bank. I mean. It, 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 it really looks like they are borrowing your money so they should pay you interest for it and that is the reason for this nominal interest rate. Okay, now, we have to make the decision on where we should put our money, okay, in regards to firms or households, doesn't matter. Okay, so where, do, where should we put our money? Should we put our money into the bank or should we put our money into bonds and investments? Okay, how am I going to make this decision? Okay. I make this decision looking at opportunity costs. Now take a look at this graph over here. This graph over here shows that as interest rates are going down, my, the amount of investments are increasing. Now why is this so? Okay, think about this. If let's say um, the bank is offering me an interest rate of one percent, okay. So if I put one thousand dollars in, if, if I put about one hundred dollars inside there, and this thing pays me interest on a yearly basis, I will only earn one dollar out of this uh, interest by putting my money inside this bank. So hundred dollars will give me back hundred one dollars at the end of, at the end of the year. Okay, but what if you know I, I look at this particular bond or investment opportunity which I think can give me 
a higher rate of return. Okay, and this higher rate of return, like again, I said, is not is not an interest rate, but uh, speculative. Speculatively, I think that it can give me more than one percent. So obviously, I'm gonna take my hundred dollars and put it into the, into the investment instead, right? But now, let's say what if the banks, you know, seeing that I've taken my money and put it putting it into somewhere else, and they need this money to do investment as well. So they need to entice me to put my money into the banks, right? So what they will do is they will raise the interest rates. And by raising the interest rates from maybe $1%, 1% to 5%, you know, it's pretty attractive for me now, right? I mean, instead of risking my money in the investment market, why don't I just take my money and put it into the bank so that I can get my guaranteed 5% return? So I will take my money and I'll put it into the bank. So you see, as you can see, as interest increases, I'm taking out money from my investments and I'm going to put it into the bank. Okay, and that's where I can guarantee myself a 5% return. So to conclude... Right, the higher interest rates are, the lesser investments there will be because the opportunity cost of putting money into investments is very high given the high interest rates. Okay, but if interest rates go down to a very low level, uh, I must well put my money into investment because uh, why would I want to earn 0.2%, right? So that is why I will put my money into investment. And that is the reason for the inverse relationship between interest rates and investment. Okay, so uh, going back to this equation right here, Okay, now I hope you can understand why the minus sign is there. Okay, so in investment, okay, uh, this, this, this topic is actually quite easy. Okay, but now what I'm going to do is I am going to combine consumption and investment. Okay, so assuming that we live in an economy where there are only household and firms, there is no government. Oh, quite an awesome place, right? Okay, there's no government. Okay, so at equilibrium, uh, aggregate expenditure is going to equal to income, which is also equals to consumption plus my investment spending. So I'm going to expand out into its proper components, and I got this. Okay, so this is my AE equation. All right, I just put everything together. Okay, and in the next video, we're going to learn about government spending. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's it for investments. It's, it's very simple. Okay, but before I end this video, I just want to show you the aggregate expenditure graph. Okay, uh, this AE curve that we were talking about last week. Uh, yeah, where we didn't really complete this yet. Okay, so <coughs> if let's say now in this economy there are only households, so this would be my aggregate expenditure. Okay, so why is it shaped like this? Look at this, alright? This is my equation. So C0 is basically con uh, autonomous consumption, the consumption that is not affected by income whatsoever. That's why it is fixed, it is fixed at C0. But however, my disposable income, okay, C1, okay, this is my the part of my consumption that is uh, dependent on income. Okay, so that is why it is a slope, right? As you can see that when my disposable income increases, okay, I'm going to spend more in this portion over here. That's why it's an increasing function. Okay, so we know that aggregate expenditure equals to income at equilibrium. Therefore, at this point over here, that is where we can identify our equilibrium output, which is why not? Okay, so now let me go, let me add investment into the picture, right? So I know that investments, okay, is going to be this, right? I not minus uh, uh, I one times R R not. Okay, so I know that there is no cap, there's no letter Y in this. Okay, so when there's no letter Y in this, this becomes a fixed component in this graph over here. So it's going to increase by this much. Okay, so this is my capital letter I. So basically, I'm just going to shift it up. And as you can see, this is C plus I. With investments, basically more spending, the economy reaches a higher level of output. Okay, so that is why we want to stimulate spending. Okay, and... Now this distance over here is i, okay. So uh, I need to I need to find out how much has been added on, right? So this much has been added on, okay. This is int uh, this is investment, okay. Given a certain level of interest, alright. Okay, so <coughs> you don't really have to know this part. You're just gonna know this part, okay. As we add on, as we increase uh, consumption or expenditure, alright. This thing will either shift upwards or it will rotate to be steeper. Or flatter depending on this thing called the multiplier okay which we'll be learning in the subsequent videos okay so thank you